the Russians had won the race. The number of agents in our country engaged in trying to steal our secrets. You may steal it, but it must be similar. The year was 1971 and the stage was set for a revelation that would forever alter the course of aviation history. An aircraft that's majestic, bold and full of mysteries. An aircraft that seemed perfect but wasn't. This is the story of TU-144. In the 1970s was an era where Soviet aerospace excelled to its core. In the same period, the Soviets launched a probe and landed it on Mars. They even launched a space station. It was a period of supersonic advancement where the United States started developing supersonic aircraft. Even the British and French grew to develop an aircraft called the Concorde. Hence, the Soviets wanted the share of that too. They then planned to develop a supersonic commercial airline. The TU-144 seems very similar to Concorde from the wing design to body shape, but also beats Concorde in certain aspects. It can carry more passengers and travel at more speed, but it was plagued with issues from the start. The Concorde was far ahead of the development. The Soviet had spies that stole around 90,000 documents from Concorde and they used it to develop the TU-144. This gave an advantage to the program to boost ahead of the Concorde. Although Concorde that earned a place in history, the lesser known TU-144 baited to the skies twice. It had its maiden flight on December 1968, two months before Concorde, and then achieved its first supersonic flight on June 1969, beating the competition by four months. These were no small victories. The Americans were out of the supersonic race since Congress had cancelled the funding to a similar Boeing project in 1971. But the program was still a badge of honour for the Soviet Union. While the Concorde was built with focus on passenger comfort and it was mainly targeted for the elites and celebrities, we can say the same for TU-144. But in reality, the TU-144 was far from comfortable. TU-144 had less advanced engines, making the cabin environment very uncomfortable, where the people had to pass handwritten notes to even talk. The bathroom was unserviceable most of the time and the window shade kept coming down even with small turbulences. Apart from the passenger experience, the aircraft had wings designed for supersonic flights, which means the aircraft was not made to travel in low speeds, hence the landing was always hard landing. had developed for the most demanded transatlantic route in mind. The TU-144 lacked one special feature that the Concorde had. The Concorde can essentially switch off the afterburner once it reaches the cruising altitude, which results in less fuel being consumed and the cabin being very comfortable in comparison. But the TU-144 had to be developed without any tech from the West. Hence, the Soviet Union had no choice but to use its own developed Kuznets Stow NK-144 engines, also called Charger. Since it was a fuel guzzling machine, the TU-144 cannot even travel outside Russia. Hence, it saw only one passenger route from Moscow to Almaty. The TU-144 made its debut in the West on 1971 Paris show, where it broke the sound barrier in front of thousands of spectators and presidential area. It broke windows creating confusion among the people of Paris. No one expected a stony boom that day in the middle of the city. The TU-144 carried out many hard maneuvers and caught everyone's attention. Two years later, they intended to do the same, but disaster struck. Two minutes later, she was diving and about to crash. It tore itself to pieces and exploded, and only a rainfall of bits and pieces hit the ground. The crash turned everyone's attention towards the airworthiness and safety of the aircraft. Out of 102 flights, there were 226 mechanical issues, out of which 80% of the mechanical issue made the aircraft delay or even cancel the flight. This shows the West that the aircraft was built as a propaganda tool and was rushed to just beat the Concorde 
to launch by cutting corners. This was later proven by T144 as it was struggling to find a suitable market to operate in. The aircraft passenger service just lasted one year while the Concorde lasted a staggering 27 years when it was retired in 2003. Still, we should give the credit to Soviet engineers as they did a terrific job designing and developing the TU-144 from scratch within a few years without any technology from the West. The Concorde in the West was made to cut the travel time of transatlantic flight from 7 hours to just 3 hours. It was associated with the status of wealth. The ticket was priced at around 6 to 7 times of a normal airliner. In the Soviet Union, there was a confusion. No one knew who the aircraft was intended for. The majority of the Soviet people were not wealthy enough to afford air travel, let alone the supersonic jet. Hence, the ticket fares were set similar to normal airliners. However, the operating cost was more substantial than the normal airliner. And the T-144 stands as a symbol of both remarkable achievements and challenging setback. It also serves as a stark reminder of the political influences that shape technological advancement. From the race to outpace the West to the realities of commercial viability, the TU-144's legacy is intertwined with the pages of history. As we gaze towards the horizon of the aviation's future, Boom Supersonics Overture takes the center stage. With its innovative designs and the backing of major airlines, the dream of supersonic travel is rekindled. The timeline is set, with the first flight expected in 2027 and certification in 2029. As we bid farewell, let's remember that the skies above continue to inspire unite nations and captivate our imaginations. From the revolutionary roar of T-144 to the promise of boom overture, the sky is no longer a limit. It's a canvas where dreams take the flight.